Uh, long-term effects on keto. So one listener uh, asks, how long is it okay to stay keto? Can it affect thyroid function after some time? It depends. That's <laughs> another kind of it depends question. Uh, so some people can adapt very well. I think we can talk a little bit about males and females too. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of things going on in regard to long-term ketogenic diets and, and thyroid function, especially uh, starvation. Of course, your body is sort of sensing that if you are calorie restricted, um, your body is sensing a level of stress, which may elevate cortisol, uh, suppression of insulin is also can contribute to, uh, an increase in reverse T3. So if you have, you know, in reverse T3, we think of it as like a very, a bad thing relative to the you know, active T3, but reverse T3 is just a very elegant survival strategy. And, uh, and, and many of the things that happen when people follow a ketogenic diet or start intermittent fasting can contribute to a, a greater level of reverse T3, uh, which could suppress thyroid function. You know, you see sort of a, a decrease in body temperature overall. And there are ways to pre prevent this from happening. Do not reduce calories too quickly. Uh, don't, if you're on a high carb diet and you want to try a ketogenic diet approach, don't eliminate carbs immediately. Uh, if you're doing ketogenic diet, you might do not necessarily, a, I wouldn't recommend carb loading every, every couple of days, but what, what I call personally is just refeeds. So eating more of the same food and doing that like every three to four days would activate uh, pathways that would prevent an increase in reverse T3 and, and sort of, a, uh, allows your metabolism to keep cranking. So that's in the context of calorie restriction, I think, especially. So if you're on a calorie restricted ketogenic diet and a lot of people follow a ketogenic diet to lose weight. So I, I'd like to make it clear that they are likely calorie restricted, uh, even if they're not counting calories, if they're losing weight, they're calorie restricted and over time metabolism will slow. So one way to prevent that is to not drop calories too much and to do a refeed every three or four days, I think can prevent that. Also, I mean, you want to, there's micronutrients too can help with, uh, you know, maintaining thyroid function on a ketogenic diet. In my favorite foods like sardines and liver and Brazilian nuts are all really high in selenium. So you want to, you know, make sure you have high selenium uh, foods and make sure you have plenty of iodine sort of in your, in your foods to salt your foods. So there's sort of some ideas I think that can prevent some of the thyroid function issues that people have been reporting. And I thought it was a little bit, I didn't really believe it at first, but I've seen enough blood work to know something is happening there. Uh, and I'm not totally convinced it's from, you know, them from calorie restriction or fasting. I think there's some, uh, some, thyroid suppression of thyroid associated with the suppression of the hormone insulin. So you see some similarities. Uh, if you look at people who are fasted, you'll see some similarities in their, in their thyroid function or at least directionally with the reverse T3. And yeah, I, I think the biggest thing that kind of changed my mind is that people that are on a eucaloric ketogenic diet long term may have, and this is not, this didn't happen with me. So I just write it off as sort of it doesn't happen sometimes. But what I've seen is that their, you know, their thyroid is suppressed or they have higher reverse T3 and they're on a ketogenic diet. They're not losing weight or they've maybe even gained weight and their thyroid levels are uh, lower. So they're active uh, T3. And that doesn't happen with everyone, but it definitely happens with some people. And my T3 is always on the high end of normal. And I mean, I'm kind of, I'm sort of like a good example of someone who's been following a ketogenic diet long term. Uh, but I've seen it more in women too. So that's another subject that we can get into. Um, this sort of suppression of thyroid probably affecting up to 40% of women, I think. Mm. But it's hard to deconstruct you know what's happening because some of them are over exercising or calorie restricted or taking intermittent to fasting a little too seriously and doing it too often even 
you know, with myself, it's something that I don't do. I enjoy the benefits, but I derive more benefits from intermittent fasting if I don't do it all the time. If I do it like two days a week or something like that, I seem to derive more benefits like that. And your body adapts to that state if you're doing it all the time. So I believe, you know, it's important to use it sort of intermittently.